All right, today I'm going to be showing you the Git flow and a guide to using Git effectively. This is what I consider the cycle of using Git. And we're going to be using GitHub today to actually host our repo. So one quick mention I wanna make, if you watched my last video, which you should have done, I'll post a link in the description below. That was on how to set up a Git repository in GitHub so you can get to this portion of Git flow so you know how to use Git effectively. What is Git? Again, this is a tool to help you track changes in your source code with version control, basically the underlying tool to help you manage your repository. GitHub is a web-based repository which helps you actually host and store your files and code so this is just a hosting platform. Now that we understand the difference between the two, let's continue on with the Git flow and how to keep track of your code effectively. So first off, if you haven't already, check out my last video on how to create a new repo because you'll need a cloned down repo in order to be able to do the following. So I'm already in my repository. I've created a file inside of it. I'm gonna be updating this file and showing you how typical developers follow through and make multiple changes in one base code while simultaneously working on different parts of the code and then merging them back together. The first thing we have to talk about a little bit is really a tree branch type of hierarchy here. So we basically have like the trunk of a tree you would imagine and then you could have different branches off of that tree. Well, I like to call the trunk here main and then anything off of the trunk we can call branches. So we can call this branch one, two, three, so on and so forth. So what's the nice thing about these branches? Well, the branches in Git, I'll call them Git branches, allow you to branch off the main trunk and create and change your own code and then merge it back into main. So what does that look like? Well, if we had a main trunk and then we said, oh, I wanna create a branch and I'm gonna call this branch uh, like a front end feature. So I'm adding something to the front end while someone else is working on the back end, we can both be working on the code simultaneously in different source files, and then we could both merge back into the trunk at some point without interfering with our code and keeping up to date with the main branch or trunk. So now that you kind of understand what branches are, let's actually use one. First off, if you ever wanna list the branches that are currently available, you can type in git branch, and that'll show you where you're currently at and what is available. Right now I only have one branch which is main so I want to create a new branch. Also don't forget to be inside of your repo. Notice that I'm in my git flow repo here locally and I'm going to do git checkout space dash b and then a new branch name. So I'm going to call this new branch just so we can follow things through. Fantastic it says switched to a new branch. So what does that look like? Well if we do git branch again this is a good friend of yours. Notice that now new branch is Green main is in this white color and we have a star near new branch. That means we're currently located in new branch and that's what we're making changes of. And when we created that branch, that also took whatever was in main and is considering that the latest and greatest code that we're working on. So here we can now make code changes. I'm gonna actually make a change to my main CPB file and I am going to say something else here. And now I've added a branch. So that's what I'm gonna say here. And to clean things up, I'm just gonna put a new line character at the end of both of these, just making a little bit of an improvement. I'm gonna save. And now if I do git status, again, git status is your friend, it says, oh, there are changes that have been made. Main CPB has been changed. In order to add this in, we'll have to use the add command. But to check what's changed in a specific file, you can do git diff and then type in the file that you're looking at. And look at that, it says, this was removed, this was added or changed, and this was added or changed. So that makes sense, added a new line to this line, and then I created this new line entirely. Fantastic. That looks like the changes I made. I don't need to add any more files necessarily, but if I do git status, I do have to add the modified version of main CPP. So the next portion of this is to add in your changes. So I'm gonna do git add, and I'm going to add in the files that I've changed. If you have more than one, or you wanna include a bunch of them, you can just use asterisks where necessary, either in the extension, hitting git add main.cp. That, after I do it, I can check the status once more, and notice it says modified, 
these changes are ready to be committed. They're, they're staged. And now this is the time where I commit my code. So I can do git commit. I'm going to do a message and I'm going to put added a new line for the new branch. That's just my message. Again, think of this as little summaries that help you or team members remember the changes that you had made and pushed to the online branch. So I'm going to hit enter and it says that new branch has this commit, one file changed, two lines inserted, one line deleted. Fantastic. Finally, the last thing I need to do is push my changes to my branch. So I can do git push and then I'm going to do set upstream. I'm going to type in origin and my new branch name. Yours, of course, doesn't have to be new branch. It's whatever branch you're currently working in. And then you press enter. And I forgot two dashes here. Anyways, there we go. And that's it as far as finishing up the code for this new branch. Now it's telling me create a pull request for the new branch on GitHub by visiting. So I suggest someone from your team to actually look over the pull request to check your code. But let's go back to GitHub so we can check what this pull request means. So right here it says new branch has recent push changes that were made a minute ago. If you don't see that, you can go into your branches and check for it. So if I go to branches, I have new branch. Fantastic. It'll, it should show up here as well. But let's check out the main branch. So if I just go back to GitFlow, notice it says there's been a change here 15 minutes ago. Well, that's not the latest change that I've made. The latest change is still in a branch located away from our current main branch. So if we draw that out, that just looks like this. We have main branch or trunk, and then we have this new branch that we created. And right now they're forked away from each other, meaning main does not include the changes of the new branch. How do we merge these in? Well, that's by creating a pull request and merging the changes in. So that's the next step. I'm gonna hit the compare and pull request. I'm going to leave a comment if I have one and just keep the commit subject the same. I'm gonna create a pull request and then what's going to be checked is if the code can be merged in without any changes. Well, it can. That's because there are no conflicts. The way a conflict could happen is if two people in two separate branches have made changes to the same file or source code, well then the repo won't know which portions of the lines to keep from the same file. You'll have to actually reconcile a merging conflict online if that does happen. But anyways, if you're doing this right, you probably won't get that. I am ready to merge this pull request. If someone wants to review your code, they can go to the commit. They can actually click on it and see the changes you made. If that looks good, they'll hit review changes. They might set approve or request changes or put some comments in. Anyways, I know everything's okay here. I've been given the green and I'm gonna confirm the merge. Okay, this has been merged in. Next, it's time to do a little bit of cleanup. Delete the branch. That way it doesn't exist here anymore. No one can mistake it and people can reuse that name. And then in the main branch, I'll notice, oh, look at that. Added a new line for the new branch. It had been added five minutes ago and that pull request was finally merged in to main from the new branch. Congratulations if you did this. You've effectively used the Git flow and the way Git was intended to be used to keep track of your Git repository in GitHub. I do wanna show you how to make another change. Now that we are finished, we can do Git branch again. Notice new branch locally is still here and we should also clean this up. So let's first change our branch to main. So Git checkout main and we're now switched over to main. I'm going to type git branch and new branch is still here. That's because this is a local branch now. It's been deleted online as we deleted it a moment ago on GitHub, but these two are not in sync. So I need to delete it here locally as well, but I'm not gonna do this until I do a git pull because since we made changes to the main repo and we never actually took those down to this local git repository, we need to do that. Notice how when I did git pull, it pulled down main CPP and made those three changes that we had. One was a file change, one was two insertions, one deletion makes up three in one file that was changed. Fantastic, I have the latest main CPP file. Now I'm going to actually clear 
things out. And finally, delete that branch. So git branch dash D, and then I'm gonna specify the branch I wanna delete. I'm gonna delete the new branch. That's it, it's deleted. If I do git branch, I shouldn't see anymore. I don't, I'm in main, I got everything pulled down, and I'm ready to work again on my local project. Fantastic work. Let's go through it a little quicker this time so that we get the flow of things. This time I'm actually going to create a new branch. I'm gonna get check out branch. I'm gonna call this one organize. I'm gonna do a little bit of organization here and I'm gonna check which branch I'm on. I'm on organize, fantastic. I'm gonna move my source code and create a readme file. So first I'm gonna do readme. That's gonna be a markdown file. And in the markdown file, I'm just gonna put here, this is to show the flow of Git with GitHub. Save and exit out of there. So now I have a new readme file. Then I'm going to, and actually I wanna capitalize all that. So I'm gonna just do readme.md. Okay, fantastic. And now I'm going to move my main CPP file into a source directory. So I'm gonna first create a new directory called src for source. Then I'm gonna move main CPP into source. Fantastic. So I just have a readme file, a built file, and a source file. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do git status to see all the changes that have been made. It says it realized I deleted main CPP that I created a readme file and a source file. So the way I can accept these changes is first I'm gonna do git rm for remove and I'm gonna remove main CPP. Next, I'm going to do git add and I wanna add everything that's in source so I can just do source with a star. Star means use everything at least inside this directory called src. That should have added everything. And finally, git add and I wanna do just the readme file in the main local repo. And then I'm gonna do git status. Look at that, it says renamed main CPP has gone into source main CP. Fantastic, that's what happened. Readme.md is a new file, it's been added, and we're not keeping track of the main output file. We don't need to. Actually, what I'll do in that one is I'm just gonna remove main so it doesn't clutter things up. And if I do a git status, everything's in green. Doesn't that look pretty? All right, so we've made our changes. We're gonna check what branch we're on. We're in the organized branch. And since I've added in the code, I'm going to commit it with a new message. And I'm just going to say I cleaned some source files up. And now I'm ready to push those changes again. Git push. I'm going to set the upstream to the origin and send that organize branch up. And again, I forgot the second dash there. No big deal. Fantastic. That's been pushed up so I can create a pull request again by visiting GitHub. Back to GitHub, it noticed it pretty much right away. Organize had recent pushes less than a minute ago. Fantastic, compare and pull release request. And then I'm going to create a pull request. It's going to check and make sure there's no merging conflicts. There's not. And I'm gonna merge the pull request, confirm the merge after it's been checked and finally delete the branch. Check my files out in Git flow. Look at that, now we have a source folder, no more main CPP in the main directory and we have a readme which shows up here this is to show the flow of Git with GitHub. Sweet, things are working out. And now you're starting to understand the Git flow. We're again going back to our local repo and let me do a little bit of cleanup one more time. I deleted the branch online, but the branch still exists here. I'm going to first do Git checkout, change back to main, and I'm back in my local repo. I'm gonna do Git branch. Notice I still have organize here and main. I'm gonna switch repos, so Git checkout. Main, okay, should be back into main, and I'm gonna get rid of organize. If I do git branch, that should be gone. I'm back in main. I have the latest changes pulled down. Fantastic work. I hope you enjoyed this Git flow tutorial. You're ready to create a new branch again and make even more changes to your repository. This should help you work with multiple people on a project and even contribute to projects that are currently available. If you're more of a person who likes to read along and follow, I do have a blog post on this. I'll, I'll post it in the description below so you can check that out as well if you want. It makes it easier to copy and paste things and read at your own pace. If you're one of the 95% who hasn't already subscribed, please subscribe below. You're getting quality content out of this. Don't forget to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video.